You have the Focusrite Scarlett Solo 4 generation with this great preamp, but the sound does not match your expectations. Why? Don't worry, you will reach the quality you wish for after applying the tricks from this video. This is not a review or an unboxing, I will show you step by step everything you need to know to record great audio with Scarlett Solo 4 generation, 3rd generation or Scarlett 2i2, it's almost the same thing. And also how to set it up in your recording software, I will show you how to set it up in multiple software. You buy your interface, take it out of the box and find a cable that's USB-C to USB-A. If you want to replace this with a USB-C to USB-C cable to use it with a Mac as an example without adapters, you can do that but be careful to use a quality data cable. Because this audio interface is plug and play, all you need to do for this first step is to connect it to the PC or Mac. Simple as that, the audio interface will be recognized instantly on both systems. If you want, and I recommend having it, the Focusrite Control 2 software can be handy in some situations and to upgrade the firmware of the interface. I'll add a link in the description for the official Focusrite website to download and install it. We are going to talk about the software in a bit. Next, you need to tell your system to output the sound through the interface and set the input through the interface. On a Mac, hold the Option key and press on the little speaker in the upper right corner of the screen. For outputs, choose the audio interface and the same thing for inputs. On Windows, right click the speaker icon on the bottom right corner of the screen and click the sound settings. For the output, choose Scarlett Solo 4th generation. For input, the same, choose the Scarlett Solo. Now the system will output and input the audio through your audio interface. Next, let's connect everything to the audio interface. Number one, if you have speakers, connect them to the outputs at the back of the interface. For this, you need to buy proper cables according to your speakers. XLR to jack, jack to jack, jack to RCA, it depends on your speakers. But during this step, be careful to turn the speakers off when you plug them in. Otherwise, they will make some loud pops, a noise that can destroy your speakers if the volume is too high. After you connect your speakers, turn them on, and now when you play something on your PC, it will output the sound through your interface, and you can control the volume using the big knob on the front of the interface. If you don't have speakers and want to use your headphones, just connect them to the headphones output on the front of your interface. If you have headphones with a 3.5 mm jack, use an adapter to this big jack. And now you can control the volume of your headphones independently from the speaker's volume, which is great. Now let's move to the inputs and connect our microphone. Use the microphone input on the back of your interface and connect your XLR microphone. With this kind of connection, you will have the best sound quality. This is why I always prefer to use XLR microphones instead of USB ones. You just need to connect the microphone and set the type based on what mic you use. If you have a dynamic microphone, you just need to connect it and that's it. If you use a condenser microphone, after you connect it, activate the 48 volts phantom power and you're good to go. If you don't know if your microphone is a dynamic microphone like this one or a condenser microphone like this one, before connecting it, check on the manufacturer's website and find out what microphone you have. If you have a dynamic one, it's important not to turn on the 48 volts phantom power because your microphone doesn't require any voltage. If your microphone is a condenser, connect the microphone first and after it's connected, turn on the phantom power. It is not indicated to connect the mic while the 48 volts phantom power is turned on. If you want to unplug the mic, first turn off the 48 volts phantom power wait a little bit for discharge and after disconnect the microphone. And now after you have the microphone connected, I use a condenser microphone like this one, the 8875R from Audio-Technica, all you need to do is to set the gain right from the knob number two. The input microphone is controlled by the knob number two on the channel number two. Now let's go to the most important step to have great audio recordings. In your audio recording software, we are going immediately to set them up. Pay attention to the VU meter and the input volume to set it right. You have the mic connected and it's working. You receive the signal in your software. Stay in the final position as you will record your video and say something at the same volume you will speak at when you record. Adjust the gain to reach somewhere between minus 12 and minus 6 dB. 
If you know you have big differences in volume when you speak and speak quietly and after laugh super loud or scream or create loud sounds, keep the gain lower, somewhere between minus 18 and minus 12 dB to be sure that you will not reach zero. That means clipping and distortions. Once your sound is distorted, it can't be recovered. We want to stay away from zero in all situations to avoid clipping, but we also don't want to record at a volume that's too low. If you speak in a relatively constant volume, as I speak in my videos, between minus 12 and minus 6 dB, it's perfect. We want to reach a maximum of minus 6 dB to have this safety space between minus 6 and zero, to be sure we don't clip and have some space also to work with in post-production. Now, if you set your gain correctly, your final result will be great. How much you need to turn your gain knob to reach the perfect volume depends on your microphone. Dynamic microphones require most of the time more gain and you need to crank the gain up more, and condenser mics require less gain. Tweak the gain knob until you find the best level for your microphone. And if you find this video useful until now, don't forget to press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. Thank you. Next, if you want to listen to something in your headphones when you speak and also hear yourself live with no latency in the headphones, activate the direct mode. This is mostly for singers who want to hear the instrumental in the headphones and hear themselves singing without latency. And also you have a button called air. This will boost the high frequencies and change the tone of your recording, making the sound a little bit brighter if you have a muffled microphone. According to your microphone, check it and see if you need to activate it or use it. It depends on your microphone, voice and taste. It's something you need to test and see if you need it. I don't need it because I have a bright microphone and a high voice. And if you want to connect and record instruments, you also have the instrument input. Connect it there, activate it and set the gain from knob 1. Now let's set a few recording software step by step and get ready to record your awesome quality. But first, I want to let you know that I will add affiliate links in the description if you want to buy the audio interface or my audio setup to record talking head videos. If you click on my links, you're not going to pay anything extra, but I will earn a small commission and this will help me keep sponsors away from this channel and create more valuable content for you. Thank you. Let's set first the DaVinci Resolve, which in my opinion is the best video editing software when you learn it. It's free, it's incredibly powerful, and if you edit your videos in DaVinci and record your audio also in DaVinci, your workflow will be incredibly fast. Open DaVinci Resolve, create a project and a new timeline. Go to the Fairlight page, right click on your tracks and add a mono track. Next, go to the DaVinci Resolve menu, go to Preferences, Video and Audio I.O. For input device and output device, select your Scarlett Solo. But don't forget to set it in your system as I showed you earlier. Do that before opening DaVinci Resolve. Next, on the mono track you just created, on the mixer, click on Inputs. Here, where you see no input, select Input. On this page, you will see all the channels you have on your hardware on the left side and on the right side, all the channels you have in your software. Click on channel 2 of the Scarlett and on the channel you want to record to, your new mono track. Be sure both are selected and click Patch. You won't see yet the input level because first we need to turn off the audio output to be sure that we are not going to have feedback from our speakers. Click on this little speaker here and turn off the output. And now click on your mono track on the R to arm the track for recording. Adjust the gain knob to the proper lever and when you press record, everything will be recorded directly into the software and the track you want. When you finish, don't forget to press again the R button to turn off the input and turn on your output to hear the recording. You just need to set it up once or twice and you will see that it's so easy and fast. This is my favorite method to record my audio for videos. If you need to change something in your voiceover or record or add something, just press record again and have the audio directly in your editing software. Now let's set it in Premiere Pro. Open Premiere Pro and create a project and the sequence. Next, you want to create a mono track. Right click on your audio tracks, this one, add video tracks 0, add audio tracks 1, and select the position after a specific track or first. I will select it to be the first one for this demonstration and select the type to mono. Add audio submix tracks 0 and click OK. Now your first track is this one, mono. 
Next, go to the Premiere Pro menu, settings and select audio hardware. Here, on the default input and output, select your Scarlett Solo interface. Next, go to audio and check mute input during timeline recording. This is to avoid feedback. Next, right-click on this little mic here and select voiceover record settings. On source, choose your audio interface and for input, choose input 2. Now you can see the level and you can set the gain correctly. After, click close. Now all you have to do is press on the little microphone, wait for the countdown and record your voice. In Premiere Pro, the scary thing is that you won't see the waveform and the recording, record everything and it will appear after you press stop. When you finish, click stop and you will see your recording on your track. Now let's set it up in Adobe Audition. Open the software, go to File, New and create a multi-track session. Right click on a track, go to Tracks and delete empty tracks because we don't need them now. Right click again, Tracks and add a new mono audio track. You now have a mono track here. Next, go to Adobe Audition menu, settings, audio hardware and for input and output, select your audio interface and click OK. On your track here, you can select the input for this track. Click, go to mono and select input 2 of the Scarlett Solo. Now press the R button to arm the track for recording. But on this small meter, you won't be able to see and set the gain properly. For this, go to the mixer and you will see here the level properly. Adjust your gain, go back to the editor and press record. When you finish, press space or stop and that's it, you have your audio recorded in Adobe Audition. Next, let's do it in Audacity. First, open Audacity, right click and select add mono track. Now you have a mono track. Go to audio setup and then the recording device and here select your Scarlett. Next, the audio setup again and recording channels. And here we have a problem because with this software we can't choose the input 2 of the interface. On a mono track it will record the right input of the interface which is the instrument input. And here we can use the focus right control to software. Open your software, go to these three dots, preferences, device and check combine inputs 1 and 2. Now it will combine both inputs but because you have nothing connected to the instrument input, you will hear only the microphone. Check this and now you can close the software. And in Audacity, at the audio setup, recording channels, choose one mono. Now click on the small microphone and start monitoring. You should now see the input signal and set your gain correctly. Next, just press record, record your audio and stop when you finish. I like and recommend DaVinci Resolve, it's the clearest, best, easy to use software but all of them are great. The most important thing to do is to set your audio gain correctly. With the audio gain set correctly, you will have the cleanest audio and won't need to do too much at the processing step. But you can set everything perfectly and end up with bad audio if you don't know how to use your mic properly, the position and everything. And I will give you right now a dedicated video where I show you all you need to know to combine with what you learn in this video and achieve the perfect audio quality for your videos. It's easy and having great audio will take your videos to the next level.